American politics has become a contact sport, it seems. Few know it better than a top congressional Republican named Jim Jordan. Now in his book, Do What You Said You Would Do, the former college wrestling coach is talking about doing business in Washington while taking more than a few bullets for Donald Trump. Like one of the stories I tell is um, the day Gates and Scalise and some of my colleagues stormed, the, as the press would say, stormed the bunker in the basement of the Capitol um, and how that all unfolded. Stormed this closed door deposition in a secure room and disrupted the, the so-called Republican storming of a closed hearing happened in October of 2019. Congressional Democrats led by Adam Schiff were set on impeaching President Trump. Adam Schiff was doing secret depositions and hearings on trying to impeach the President of the United States and the country couldn't see it. And members of Congress said, this is ridiculous. Our constituents have a right to know what's going on. At least let their representative be a part of that. And they came in and he gaveled it out and got all mad, called me to his office. Adam Schiff called you to his office. Do you have to go? And what did he say? No, no, he said he just wanted to talk to me. So I grabbed Meadows, who was in there. It's interesting because there, there was a few guys who probably, we probably were in more depositions than anyone else, probably even more than Schiff. Uh, Mark Meadows, myself, Scott Perry, and, and Lee Zeldin. Listening to other people giving testimony. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, he was upset that these other members wanted to be there and hear what was going on. Gavel to, gavel to close to the, to the deposition and the hearing and asked me to come down to his office. I grabbed Meadows and Perry. We went down to his office and had a little discussion. And he, and he told me, he goes, uh, you got you to tell him to leave. I go, I got to tell him to leave. You're the chairman. I kinda, I'm kind of glad they're here. <laughs> and uh, uh, long story short, they, uh, it, it was a little kind of interesting meeting, but uh, they wound up staying and, you know, they, and, until we got called to the, to the floor to, uh, to actually vote on some other legislation. But it was one of those days that I helped think help galvanize the, the party because the conventional wisdom was going into impeachment that every Democrat would vote for it and Republicans would lose some members and that would vote with the Democrats. And it wound up being just the opposite. There will be a vote in the U.S. House of Representatives, Mr. Speaker, on the impeachment of the president. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. The ayes have it. Every Republican voted against impeaching President Trump, which was the right, right decision, right position. And then two Democrats voted with this, and a third switched parties and voted with this. So, uh, and I think that, that moment really helped bring our team together and show the American people how ridiculous this whole thing was. Jordan was also a key defender of Trump in the face of a hostile and sometimes law-breaking FBI. The inspector general eventually recommended criminal charges against ex-FBI Director James Comey and Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, but the Department of Justice gave both a pass and didn't bring charges. More recently, an FBI lawyer was convicted of doctoring a document to get a wiretap and spy on a Trump associate. And thanks to an ongoing investigation by U.S. Attorney John Durham, we now know more. The FBI's top lawyer at the time reportedly conferred with a Clinton lawyer before the wiretap. The Clinton lawyer was linked to the dossier of secret information the FBI used to claim Trump was a Russian spy. The dossier was actually political opposition research paid for by Democrats. I think they knew. I think, I think Jim Comey knew the dossier was garbage but they needed a reason to do what they wanted to do, which was to go after President Trump. If the tail is wagging the dog and the government is doing this, then who does ultimately hold them accountable? Because once again, we're back to the FBI and the Department of Justice, many of the same people still there or who know the people involved. Are they gonna be left to do investigations about who's accountable? Well, ultimately Congress uh, has got to do the oversight, but we can, as you know, we can't prosecute anyone. And if we're fortunate enough to be back in the majority in January of 23, which I think is a darn good chance that happens, uh, then we will do the oversight and we will have the hearings you need to have to get the information out there. But in the end, for people to ultimately be held accountable and people to be prosecuted, it takes a Justice Department willing to do that. My guess is that's not going to happen until President Trump runs in 24, is elected president. So we're talking in, in, in some time in 2025. You think he runs in 2024? I, I bet my house on it. I mean, he hasn't said anything officially, but I want him to run. I mean, you think about the title of our book, Do What You Said You Would Do. No president has done more what they said they would do 
than President Trump. I mean, I used to do this list during the campaign. He said he would cut taxes, he did. He said he'd reduce regulation, he did. Said he'd build the wall, he did. Said he'd get out of Iran deal, he did. Said he'd put the embassy in Jerusalem, he did. Said he'd put conservatives on the court, he did. Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Coney Barrett, said he, I mean, on and on we could go. And he did all that with everyone in this town against him. Every Democrat, everyone in the mainstream press, everyone in the bureaucracy. Some Republicans. And I was just getting rid of that. Some Republicans. You beat me to the punch. What is it like to have been targeted because you are in that orbit? If you believe in this great country, you gotta, you're going to have to fight for the things that make the country special in the first place. You're going to get attacked. You just are. They're going to call you names, call you racist, and try to cancel you. But it's worth it nonetheless. Most recently, Jordan is under attack for announcing he will not cooperate with the Democrat-led investigation into the January 6, 2021 Capitol riots. Democrats accuse him of being evasive.